So last lecture we started the general formulation of finite volume schemes. So we store the cell averages. Ui is equal to 1 over delta x times the integral from xi minus half and xi plus half of u dx. So remember, the first class citizen in finite volume is now the cell, cell averages and the cells itself. The grid points lies in between the cell averages. So they are second class citizens and we use the half in uh, uh, i plus half, i minus half to denote them. All right. So, so this is our definition of ui bar and uh, in the future in finite volume I will just use ui to denote them because whenever I say ui it's actually the cell average. Okay. So the time derivative of a cell average so I would just say ui equal to this. The time average, the time derivative of ui is going to be exactly 1 over delta x times f of i minus half minus f i plus half. This is exact. Again, this is exact. This is exact if my f of i plus half is equal to f of u at i x i plus half and so is x i minus half. The reason finite volume is an approximation is uh, it's not going to solve the equation exactly. It's because we don't have the value of u at x i plus half. We only have the cell averages. So we need to approximate approximate f of i plus half from the cell averages averages of u okay so in the last class we did a central difference type of approximation not central difference a central average type of approximation we computed f on the cell average values and we just average to neighboring cells to get the flux. It turns out to be a working scheme before any discontinuity developed. right? And after some discontinuity, after a shockwave is developed, what happened? Oscillation starts to form. right? The solution goes crazy. And we didn't want that. So today we are going to discuss a very crude way to fix that problem. That's called an upwind scheme. Okay, so the upwind scheme. So it's a way to fix the oscillations around shocks. Okay, so re the, the motivation of that is still looking at the XT diagram. The XT diagram is a diagram when we saw on the screen that the characteristics were straight lines. Remember that? The, so we see straight lines being characteristics, right, and straight lines being characteristics, and uh, in between these straight lines, when the straight lines meet, there is a shock wave. And the shock wave is not going, not necessarily going to be straight, it, it can curve, right? So this is, this is what we see in the XT diagram. In the XT diagram, and we know that the central difference has problem around the shock waves. So we look around the shock waves to see what is special on the XT diagram around shock waves. It turns out that what's special is that information in the in the conservation law only propagates in one direction. It either propagates towards the left or propagates towards the right. And around shock waves, information may be propagating in different directions on different sides of the shock wave. So, so the motivation 
it gives us is that when we compute the flux, perhaps we shouldn't be averaging the value at both sides. We should be emphasizing one side of the uh, the interface more than the other side. And which side should we emphasize more? Which side should we use more information from? When we are computing f of i plus half, let's say we instead of taking the straight average between f of ui and f of ui plus 1, let's say if we want to weigh them one heavier than the other, which one should we, we weigh more? Yes? I assume the side coming from. Whichever side the wave is coming from, right? I want to weigh whichever side is coming from more. So an extreme of that is I want to say it is either equal to fi or fi, fui or fui plus 1, depending on the local speed of characteristics. Right? So, for example, and we know in a discontinuity, uh, let's move it to here, f ui or f ui plus 1. The two cases are, we know that if we have a, a true discontinuity, then a shock wave would be forming and moving towards a certain direction. And the speed of the shock wave is going to be f of ui minus f of ui plus 1 divided by ui minus ui plus 1. If this one is less than zero, the wave would be moving towards the left, which in which case we want to use the right. So if it is greater than zero, the wave is moving towards the right, and we want to use ui instead of ui plus 1, right? And when it is less than zero, we want to use ui plus one rather than ui. Yes? Um, I mean, yeah. so. This is by considering there is a discontinuity at xi plus half. Yes. And in finite volume approximation, this way of thinking is to, is to approximate the solution as a piecewise constant function. Right. This is as if I'm saying, I only have the cell averages. How do I reconstruct the solution from the cell averages? This is a very crude way of performing that reconstruction. It is to say, on every cell, the solution is just a uniform constant. Then, a small shock lid is going to be, I mean, small or big shock lid is going to be formed at every interface. And this is how I'm computing the speed of that shock wave. Right? Okay, so so let's implement that scheme to see if that gets rid of our uh, our problem. Okay, and in, in, in this case, let's uh, before we implement that scheme, let's actually simplify this notation a little bit because if we evaluate this formula delta f by delta u in brute force, we actually have a problem. Because ui can be almost exactly equal to ui plus 1 in some cases. And we would be getting something divided by 0. I mean, we would get 0 divided by 0 because f of ui is, is going to be equal to f of ui plus 1. So 0 divided by 0, zero a computer would get like not a number. And uh, we'll be screwed after a while. So we want some way to evaluate this ratio without having to encounter a NAN problem. Okay, so so for example, Burger's equation. Uh, a simple way to get rid of that is by plugging the formula for f into that equation. So we are, we are going to get f of ui minus f of ui plus 1 divided by ui minus ui plus 1 would be just equal to half of ui plus ui plus 1, right, by plugging the half of u square formula. All right, so the upwind scheme in finite volume is determining, is looking at the average value of the solution on both sides, 
of the interface and choosing the side to bias according to the average solution in Burke's equation. So let's go to MATLAB and uh, write a new function called DDT upwind. And let's do that with a T and U and do the T. So still the first thing to compute is the F bar. So the cell averaged flux is equal to U squared divided by two. So that's still the same. All right. And uh, um, so speed of the characteristics or speed of the shock wave, let's say SS, is equal to U of 2 to n plus U of 1 to n minus 1 divided by 2. Right, so that's what is going to be deciding uh, if we are going to use upwind or downwind. Yes? So in this case, because F is U squared over 2, we were able to conveniently get rid of the differences. Yes. But there are cases where that's not going to be possible. Okay, so you're concerned when when you don't have an analytical formula uh, you can use in general. So if you don't have an analytical formula in, uh, to use in general, you have to separate the case where ui is almost equal to ui plus 1. In that case, if ui is almost equal to ui plus 1, what is this? What is the ratio delta f over delta u? The derivative of f to u, right? So, so generally, you have like a epsilon criterion. If the difference between u i and u i plus one is less than like ten to the minus six or something, you use the derivative formula. If it's larger than that, you use the delta formula.